Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining our Weave Online user group. We're very excited today to have a talk on Flux and Pulumi by none other uh, than the person who created the original Flux. So we will get into that. Uh, excited to see people joining. Uh, my name is Tomo Nakahara. I'm the VP of Developer Experience at the company called Weaveworks, where we created Flux and we created the term GitOps, which has now become pretty much an industry term. It's exciting to see uh, analysts and other companies using the term. So it's great to get back to roots where Michael Bridget, who used to also be at Weaveworks, uh, has now been at Pulumi for a while and naturally has seen ways to see how Flux and Pulumi uh, will work together. So if this is your first time joining our Weave online user group or the GitOps community group or one of the many groups that we have on Meetup, uh, welcome. Uh, we're really excited that you've joined. Uh, if you're on the meetup groups, then you can also see um, any of our past talks and all of the videos get posted on the Weaveworks uh, YouTube channel. Uh, this one also is getting recorded, so you'll be able to see that there. So thanks so much for joining us. So a little bit about our company, if this is the first time you're hearing about us. Uh, like I said, uh, we are Weaveworks. The website is weave.works. Uh, we've been in the Kubernetes space for um, almost the early years of Kubernetes. Uh, we've been building our stuff on it. And uh, that's what led to sort of the natural evolution of this concept of GitOps that our CEO coined. And it really has now become a natural evolution of Kubernetes itself. Uh, and all that happened because so much of our company Weaveworks is founded on open source. Um, you know, we were doing networking in the early days, we we're doing a bunch of different things. And as you can see, what really kind of landed um, is the project Flux that um, Michael created. Um, then we started putting the CNCF. There have been uh, new evolutions with that, um, including a project called Flagger that is part of Flux now uh, for a couple of years now. Um, maybe some of you know Stefan Prodan, who's one of the maintainers of both uh, Flux and Flagger. Uh, Stefan saw, wow, there's this great opportunity to add uh, what's now called progressive delivery, which is like canary deployments, blue-green deployments, uh, A-B testing, what have you, uh, in between Kubernetes and Flux. Uh, that would be able to create that sort of safety between the two. So that has been folded into the Flux project for a while. And the exciting thing is last year, um, Flux and Flagger as part of it um, became a graduated project within the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And we're really excited to announce that um, uh, likely by KubeCon, uh, but just to give it a little bit more leeway, easily by this summer, um, it will be GA. So it's been a long, wonderful journey. Uh, our company, Weaveworks, now seeing this maturation of Kubernetes and Flux, has now built a product, both an open source version that we call Weave GitOps, and then um, the enterprise version, naturally called Weave GitOps Enterprise, that are built on Flux. So uh, if you're using open source Flux and Flagger, but you want to have sort of the enterprise level capabilities, uh, support, and obviously maintenance, We've got these wonderful tools um, with Weave GitOps and Weave GitOps Enterprise. Um, many of the talks that we've been having with our community in Kubernetes and Flux is that uh, people start their journey all excited and they wanna build their own developer platform within their company and Kubernetes is set up to do that. Um, Flux definitely brings the uh, GitOps capabilities to it, but uh, I don't know, six, nine months into it, you might realize uh, now I'm doing trainings and I'm doing support and like now my job is about teaching about Kubernetes and trying to um, teach my app developers about uh, Kubernetes and GitOps way of thinking and uh, many people are seeing that it's just not scalable and so we're really excited that our products can bring that capability and that abstraction especially for app developers who um, you know just can't become experts uh, of, of all the components that uh, exist in the infrastructure. Uh, so uh, we'll be sharing uh, links for any of you who've um, joined uh, uh, to your emails. Uh, one of our latest talks is with uh, Brendan Burns, the Kubernetes creator is uh, speaking with Stefan Prodan, the uh, maintainer and creator of Flagger on exactly that topic on where we are in Kubernetes in 2023 and how um, you know it's great to start with it, but uh, doing full open source for the long term, it can be quite challenging. So they have great both open source guidance and um, commercial possibilities so that people can really accelerate in their cloud native journey. 
Within WeWorks, we're also excited that we build upon the extensibility of Flux and Flagger. And one of the key areas that people have been excited is um, most Flux users are also Terraform users. So if you haven't heard about the Terraform controller, it is a really exciting way to be able to bring the GitOps uh, benefits to how you manage Terraform. So automation, reliability, et cetera, um, that can all be done with our open source uh, Terraform controller. Um, and then also out there, uh, we have some great videos that we'll share is how we built a GitOps extension for Visual Studio Code. And we just finished a great talk um, to the Visual Studio community so that app developers can do all their deployments from, um, their, from Visual Studio and it has GitOps baked into it. And then we also have these commercial templates. There's open source, but also commercial templates so that the platform team can create all the things that they need, whether it's policies, um, canary deployments, you know, all the things that they need to be compliant. Those will all get baked into a template that then the app developer can just grab from Visual Studio Code and then do their deployment. It all does the things that they need. They get a confirmation that the deployment was successful or not, and they can go back to building apps, which is what they want to do, build the best and innovative apps as possible. So we will send an email with all those links. If those interest you, don't hesitate to ask us any questions about it um, by email. We're happy to answer all your questions. We're also really excited that we will be at KubeCon EU uh, next month, as well as Open Source Summit and GitOps Con in May. Uh, we have the QR code that I'll have here and in a couple slides. Please uh, grab that QR code. Uh, we are building out the website, especially for KubeCon EU, for all the exciting activities that we will have at that event. Uh, so again, welcome. If you've never heard of WeWorks, our website is weave.works. Uh, check us out. All right, um, a little bit of housekeeping and there's that QR code again, if you wanna find out about KubeCon EU. Uh, again, we'll be talking about Flux and Plumi today. We're really excited to have Michael Bridgen, like I said, the original creator of Flux, um, who's been at Plumi to talk about how Flux and Plumi can work well together. Um, and a key thing, we will take all your questions via the chat. So please make sure that you post to everyone when you um, post your questions. So a lot of times people answer each other's questions um, and we have a really dynamic conversation there. So make sure, um, especially if you're answering someone else's question to make sure that your chat says to everyone. Uh, and usually these events go from 30 to 45 minutes. If there are a ton of questions, then we will go longer, but we have a hard stop at 60 minutes. So that will be at the top of the hour. So uh, it's great to see a lot of people here, a lot of returning people. And so with that, I think we will get to Michael. We'll All right, am I live? Yes, I will stop. Right, sharing. I've still got your screen share showing. Uh, hi everyone, um, <clears throat> I'm Michael Bridgen. I worked on Flux for quite a while at this time I mentioned. Then I worked on Pulumi for a bit and I'm gonna talk about how those two things, Flux and Plumi, can be combined to great effect. That's my claim. Since you're here, you are probably familiar with Flux, um, but you may not be familiar with Plumi. So I'll talk a bit about what Plumi is and what it's good at. And then I have some things to say about what Flux is good at later. Plumi is a product that self identifies as infrastructure as code. And simply means that you write out a description of your infrastructure, virtual machines, databases, and whatnot on AWS and Azure, Google Cloud, and so on. You write that out as a program and Plumi runs the program and creates updates and deletes the infrastructure as necessary to um, fulfill the description. And if this reminds you of, uh, of Terraform, then you're absolutely on the right page. Um, the big difference is that Terraform is based on its own special language, HCL, while Plumi uses general purpose programming languages uh, like TypeScript, JavaScript, Go, Python, .NET languages, uh, and Java. And if you want to read or um, participate even in comparisons between Terraform and Plumi, I can recommend Reddit, which has some of those. So I'm going to share my screen because I have some code to show. Do that. Okay. 
uh, and Tamo can tell me if I'm sharing the wrong thing. But uh, this is a Pulumi program. It's in JavaScript, uh, has all the sort of normal JavaScript things there. It, it, um, it's requiring some modules and then creating some objects, assigning them to variables and so on. This is what a Pulumi program looks like. And the what Pulumi does, the clever thing it does is that it effectively runs the program and then registers every time you create a new object representing some bit of your infrastructure in the course of the program. Uh, and then once the program is run to completion, it goes away and figures out all the things that it needs to create uh, in you know, AWS or wherever, um, create to delete, update or replace so that uh, all the infrastructure exists as described and understands dependencies between things. So for instance, um, if you use a property of something you've created to create something else, it understands that it needs to do that first thing first. Um, and it also understands where it needs to, um, or it can replace something in place, um, i.e. mutate it rather than deleting it and then recreating it. So um, it tries to minimize downtime in that way. So far, so good. You can also write a Pulumi program in YAML. So here is a Pulumi program in YAML. Um, let's skip to the interesting bit. Um, so this is kind of similar to the JavaScript program. Um, you can see um, if you squint your eyes a bit, maybe that there's some objects with some properties um, and they're being assigned names. So default, uh, default SQL admin, default editor, things like that. Um, here is a database instance and a cluster. And you might also have noticed that there are some places where uh, it has kind of these dollar braces references, and that is where it's interpolating values from other objects in. So again, there's this idea of dependencies between things. Now, I really like this yeah, uh, programs as YAML thing because um, I think it makes the whole thing more accessible uh, when you've got a representation of your infrastructure as data. Um, and also, uh, anything that looks like YAML can probably go into a Kubernetes resource. So um, there's some foreshadowing for you there. So up here, I'm generating uh, a service account just in the middle here. And key for that, and then I'm in this output bit, I'm making that available for other Pulumi programs um, in my organization or account to use. So this is, um, I think, kind of a crucial part of what I'll be talking about is this idea of kind of uh, layering systems or, or parts of your infrastructure by sort of creating a context in which you're going to run more things. Um, and that counts for Flux as much as it does for Pulumi. Now, I said I was going to talk a bit about what makes Flux special. Uh, and in my opinion, it is not so much about what it does, although that is really useful, but what it encourages you to do. And that is to structure the description of your system, in particular, into layers. Um, so if I switch to here, I've drawn this crude diagram. Um, at the, what this is trying to show is that um, Flux has uh, mechanically has uh, this sort of sync syncing primitives. So Git repositories, customizations, if you know it well, but they let you point to um, effectively files in a Git repo somewhere, and then those will get applied into the cluster. And what you end up doing if you have several teams or you have your um, YAMLs in different places you end up kind of doing this over hops. So you would have a Git repository uh, which, and a customization which thinks some other Git repository and customization which itself does some work, maybe creates some Kubernetes objects. 
Um, and at the same time, because of this hop, this gives you the opportunity to um, do that thing I mentioned before, which is to create this kind of security context in which to do the other thing. So if you're a platform team, um, you might want to create a namespace and a service account with limited permissions um, for an, another team, say an app team, um, to put their own stuff in. But, and so you arrange for the namespace and the RBAC to be set up, and then uh, you let them sync whatever it is they want, and, and the RBAC will make sure that they can't go beyond what you've allowed them. Um, sometimes I have thought of this kind of having to do links in a chain like that um, as, as sort of bookkeeping and complication, and it can be that, um, but it's also an opportunity to be sort of disciplined about how you lay your system. So another big win with Flux, in my opinion, is that it gives you points of integration um, into continuous delivery. In fact, that's kind of the reason it exists. So taking the system description from Git or, or OCI artifacts and, and applying it gives you um, a bit of machinery that you can tie into automation and human processes. And the obvious one here is actually the original byline for GitOps, um, if I remember it correctly, uh, operations by pull request. And what I mean by that is uh, reviewing pull requests ties human level workflow um, that is someone else looking at your code to what happens in Git and then flux ties what happens in Git to what happens in your cluster. So now you have a human level workflow with built-in audit and rollback thanks to Git uh, tied to what happens in your Kubernetes cluster. Um, and that is GitOps in a nutshell, more or less. There are some more integration points. So um, go to the next slide. This is an even cruder cluster, but what I'm trying to get at here is that once you're tied into CI, then you can do things like um, you have a number of places where you can sort of intervene and say, no, this is not good. So in CI, you can have validation, um, you can check policies uh, and then you know, make sure it builds, build the artifact, sign it, and then push it to um, another place, an artifact repo, or it might just you know, go into Git. And then Flux is another gatekeeper. So it can say, um, no, I'm gonna refuse this, it's not signed um, and refuse to kind of move forward. But otherwise it, it um, you know, will um, affect whatever it is you've put in the image or, or Git. And that's really useful um, because it means you can, again, tie it to uh, automation and, and workflows. Um, you can move things through different environments. Um, and I think we've GitOps has something like that built in. Um, so you know, as it passes checks, you can move it from a dev environment to some sort of staging to prod with perhaps more um, rigorous checks of user acceptance testing as you go. And this brings us to the first Flux Pulumi combo. Um, so this is a way that Pulumi can really gain from what Flux does because you can hook Pulumi up to Flux sources. So you get that integration with the continuous delivery pipeline. You get the um, signature verification, all that sort of thing. So if you are just running, want to run Pulumi programs, then um, great, this gives you a way of um, you know, verifying sources and things like that, and you know, having notifications and other things that Flux gives you. And the thing that's labeled Plumi there, the thing that makes this possible is that there is a Plumi Kubernetes operator um, or Plumi operator, since we're talking with respect to Kubernetes here. Um, and this is a Kubernetes operator. It is a controller like Flux's controllers, a source controller and whatnot. Um, it runs in Kubernetes, but the programs you give it don't have to be about Kubernetes. They can describe 
infrastructure, um, like the programs before, that uh, is in Google Cloud um, or AWS or um, use any SDK or platform that's available to uh, Pulumi, which there's roughly 100 of them, um, all the ones you might think of, um, and things like GitHub, so you can control your GitHub uh, repos and so on with Pulumi programs. And this is kind of the neatest thing, I think. This is sort of the crux of what I want to talk about. Um, you can supply Pulumi programs to the operator as Kubernetes resources. So um, that means um, you can use Kubectl and Kubectl to put them into the cluster and Plumi will, the operator will act on them. Um, but it also means that they can be filed in a Git repo somewhere and Fox can sync them for you. But let me replay that from another angle. With the Kubernetes operator, Flux can sync Kubernetes resources that describes, describe all sorts of infrastructure and possibly even all your infrastructure. So now you can have human level workflows with built-in auditing and rollback, thanks to Git, around what happens in your entire infrastructure potentially. And that again is GitOps in a nutshell um, for a much larger nut. Okay, I'm trying to, gonna try and do a demo now. Let's have a look at uh, this in action. Okay, switch to my terminal. Sorry, just checking, it's okay. Yep. Uh, no, that's not useful. Okay. So what I want to try and do is uh, get to the point where I can deploy an application to Kubernetes that has some Kubernetes components, but also have some has some infrastructural components that are outside Kubernetes. But I want to be able to sync that with Flux, so have it described as Kubernetes YAMLs that get uh, synced into the cluster by Flux. Um, and the sort of scenario I'm thinking of is I am part of a platform team and I'm enabling an app team to deploy their app. And in this case, the app team is going to run excitingly WordPress on Google Cloud. Uh, I actually took this from a Google Cloud tutorial, that's why. But before we can run Flux or the Plumi operator, we have to have a Kubernetes cluster at all. So there's a bootstrapping part of this. Um, you could do it lots of different ways. I'm going to use um, Pulumi uh, because it bottoms out provisioning a Kubernetes cluster and I know how to do that. Um, so I'll do that with the Plumi program, which you saw before. Let's go back to it. Not that one, this one. So here, center um, is a Google Cloud Kubernetes cluster. So this uh, program creates this cluster and a node pool for it to use and a service account, which I will use later. And then it exports um, a Kuba config, which I can use to connect to that cluster and a key for the service account. Uh, it also creates a Cloud SQL instance because that doing that takes ages and I wanted to get that done ahead of time. Um, that in theory could be done later. Um, okay, so let's see if I can run that. Am I in the right place? Yes. So this is using the Plumi command line. Actually, let's do this. Okay, so that tells me that it would create all those things. Um, but since I ran this ahead of time, those things already exist. So actually, as there is nothing to do. Um, but I, I promise there will be something actually happening in the remainder of the demo. So there's a, a second bit of provisioning that has to occur before Flux is running the show, um, and that's installing Flux itself. Uh, I could use Flux Bootstrap, um, which is really a nice kind of smooth 
user experience, but um, I'm trying to do keep within Pulumi. So um, I'm going to use another Pulumi program to do this part of the bootstrapping. Uh, in fact, I'm going to use this Pulumi program, which you saw earlier. And now you can perhaps interpret what some of these things are doing. So this part here is referring to the bootstrap stack, which is the one I just ran. And the reason it does that is because it can then get the Kuba config that I exported from it so that it's able to access the, um, the cluster. So again, there's this kind of um, idea of layering where I create the cluster and then I create a Kuba config so that someone else can run their stuff. Um, and when I say someone else, I mean me in this case. And then this actually uses, to install Flux, it uses the Flux Pulumi provider, which is a wrap around the Flux Terraform provider, which is part of the Flux project. Um, this is pretty convenient. Um, there's other ways I could have done this, but um, this is a, sort of an easy thing. Um, there are good examples and so on for doing it. Uh, and in this case, I'm just generating a whole bunch of YAMLs, which I'll then apply and what this looks like, and then a bunch of secrets. Um, so what this looks like when I run it is, so first it's going to show me what it would do. So that's what the provider, um, the Flux provider generates is a whole bunch of all the deployments and CRDs and so on that you need to run Flux and see, yes. And so this is the bit where you get to see it actually doing something. So it's going to replay that, um, but it will actually create the things this time. Um, so, Plumi has some idea of the order it should do things in, but quite often um, it just tries to run everything and then has to retry stuff. So I suspect there'll be a lot of retries here, um, but I also expect that it will complete eventually. This is much more of a problem, by the way, um, when you're trying to take a stack down, i.e delete all the things that you've created because um, there's lots more sort of gnarly dependencies between things when you're deleting stuff. Um, so quite often you have to go in and, and um, remove finalizers and delete things manually before it'll kind of stick before you can start again. Uh, so I've been doing that a lot over the last couple of days. Oops. There's also some secrets in there. And again, the secrets are kind of um, handing on uh, permission to do things. Oh, that's not good. It's failing. This means I may have to run it again. Okay. Now, um, I could actually have put um, most of this stuff in the other program, um, but uh, the other program doesn't know how to deal with Kubernetes YAMLs in the same way. So um, I had to do it as a separate program, but that's kind of good because that means that you get to see a YAML program and a JavaScript program. Okay, uh, and in the end, it makes it, he said, hopefully. I'm not sure what those are. Oh, that's breaking.
Okay. Oh, that's really nice. Okay, never mind. I'm going to cheat and hopefully this will actually get things working. But we have gone slightly off pist piste here. Okay. So uh, we can look at Hooray, that seemed to work. So we can look at um, what's actually being synced by flux. So here is uh, a Git repository, flux Git repository and customization, flux Git repository here, that just pull down the YAMLs for the Pulumi operator. Um, so that's actually, in this context, the easiest way to run the Pulumi operator. Um, I'm going to apply those. And we should be able to look at what's in the cluster through the lens of flux now. Yep, okay, so there we are. There's the um, Plumi operator Git repository, and I should be able to do this as well. Yep, oh, okay, great. So we can see that the, there's two customizations. One does the CIDs, which have to be there before the deployment will work. Um, so hopefully if we look at this again, it will have applied that. Wonderful. Okay, so the Plumi operator should be running and we can take a look. Uh, that might take a wee while to come up. Okay. So let's give the Plumi operator something to do. Uh, I'm going to take a look at some more code. This is the app team's YAMLs. This describes both their infrastructure and the Kubernetes deployment for running the, the WordPress app. So this is the um, this is the Plumi program, but as a Kubernetes resource. So you might notice that it looks a lot like, uh, once you look at this bit under program, it looks a lot like the um, Plumi program we saw before in YAML. Um, and really that's what it is. It's just that, but wrapped in some Kubernetes uh, metadata and, and so on. And what this Plumi program does is create a database in the instance um, that we created in the Bootstrap and Faith, uh, and then creates a user for that database and then puts that in the secret so that the deployment, which is just a, now a regular Kubernetes deployment, can refer to it. It can refer to the secret and get uh, credentials out of it. And in fact, it does that two different ways. Uh, mounts a volume, which has a service account key right at the bottom there. And it also gets some environment variables for WordPress out of the secret. Okay, and let's see if that's working. Hooray, the operator is up and running. So now I'm going to cheat slightly again. Uh, this cheat I was actually planning to do. So um, we are in Flux land, everything should be synced uh, through Flux. And normally what I would do is add these files to Git and then push them and then we would see that Flux syncs them. Um, but in the interests of uh, having fewer things to fail, 
I'm just going to apply them. Like this. So that created a program and a stack. The stack just points at the program and says, this is how to run it. Uh, and the deployment is a regular Kubernetes deployment. And I should be able to, so stack is the Plumi object. And there it is. And we can see, uh, because the database has been created before, it actually succeeds pretty easily. So that's great. And we also should see there's the WordPress deployment and that's up and running as well. Cool. That would actually work, that's nice. Okay, so uh, we had a look at the stack, we had a look at the deployment um let's check if it's actually running anything um, and i'm just going to port forward to do this bit uh, okay that means i should be able to access it here I remember the port number right. There we go, there's WordPress. And I actually knew that would happen. I just didn't get to the point where I got it working. Um, so there's a, a plot twist for you. Um, and if I had more time, I could go in and debug it um, and you know, commit changes to the stack or whatever I needed to do and we would see it working. So, but you know, something clearly is running and it's not crashing. And what did we see? We saw you could have um, some infrastructure defined in a Pulumi program um, it's itself in a Kubernetes resource um, that went out and created a database and then a user for the database and then put that in the secret. And then the Kubernetes deployment running in the cluster that used that secret. So we've got not only the infrastructure um, being created by the Pulumi operator from within the cluster, but also um, it tying together with stuff that is actually running in the cluster in the sort of more uh, usual way. And um, I'm going to stop the demo sharing now. So I'm going to try and recap, maybe glossing over a bit. Um, what can Flux and Pulumi do for each other? Well, Flux can give Pulumi some integrations with continuous delivery um, so that you can you know, verify sources um, and you know, have notifications and things like that, very useful. And in going in the other direction, Halloumi can uh, introduce Flux to the world of all infrastructure, not just stuff that happens in Kubernetes. Uh, so it's, I think that's a very productive relationship potentially. Um, and are there any caveats to that? Yes, it took me, this was the first time I tried to do any kind of practical system using these two things and it took me two days to get it working. Um, so, and there was a lot of running backwards and forwards to uh, you know, platform API documentation to get all the right things happening. There's a, lots of trapeze acts between the layers where you have to you know, put the secret in and then mention that secret in the next bit for it to use and so on. Um, so I think there's a lot of room for improvement with the with both tools here to help with that. Um, and as always, it's quite tricky making anything happen in a distance. So troubleshooting stuff when it doesn't work does mean a lot of tearing things down and then changing a small thing and then putting it back up again. Um, so your mileage may vary, but um, thanks for watching my demo. And I'm sorry you didn't get to hijack uh, my WordPress installation this time. Thank you so much. That's great. Um, I'll be monitoring the chat. If people have questions, we just have a few minutes. Like I said, these are usually about 30, 45 minutes, unless there are extra questions. 
Um, so I'll kick it off. Uh, yeah, I always love seeing, like, um, I guess this is kind of a uh, exploratory demo, but like, what have you heard? I mean, you know the Plumi community better than we do. We live on the flux side. So um, yeah, how, what kinds of questions or challenges have you had from your community that, that maybe led you to explore this integration? And do you know if anybody has tried it yet? I don't know if anyone has tried it yet. Um, the stuff that people, so people that buy into Plumi customers really buy into it and they do a lot of stuff with it. Um, the Plumi operator, so usually they'll run it um, either you know from local computers or more often perhaps in sort of continuous integration, continuous delivery pipelines. Um, you know, you can run it as a GitHub action, for instance. But we do have some people that run the Kubernetes operator, the Pulumi operator. Um, the trouble they tend to have is that it is, it's kind of the last thing I said, which is that if something goes wrong, it's quite hard to troubleshoot because it's sort of happening at a few removes from you. And so I think one thing the integration with Flux um, helps with is that it makes that a bit more kind of um, in the same way that Flux kind of brings those sorts of things under control. You know, you can go from one known state to another. You're not relying on someone go back to applying something at the right time or um, whatever. It, you know, you get the same effect with the Plumi operator. You can at least have these sort of known good points. So you, you know, it was working. I made some changes. Oh, no, it's not working. Okay, well, let's roll back those changes. Um, so it does help with the kind of um, being able to roll back and, and the sort of auditability, it adds, I think Flux kind of, the integration with Flux sprinkles some uh, some GitOps dust on the whole system. Yeah, oh, that's great to see. I was also curious in your exploration, was there anything that you learned that um, we could improve on the Flux side to be more, uh, I mean, I, I think we're quite proud of the extensibility of Flux, but is anything you learned while doing this? Yeah, actually, the bits involving Flux, um, I, I know it quite well, so they all went quite smoothly. Um, I think Flux has a good story for the bootstrapping bit, and I did that in Pulumi, so I didn't get to use those, uh, that nice user experience. But um, I think the combination, at least, maybe not Flux on its own, but the combination could benefit from having sort of specialized um, installation for particular platforms. So there's um, a sort of trapeze act that I referred to earlier of, you know, when I bootstrap, I create a cluster and then I create a surface account that has permissions. And then I put the surface account in an output and then I take the output and then I put that in a secret and then the Plumi operator can use it. Um, but that's actually a really roundabout way of doing things. Quite a lot of the time uh, people rely instead um, on things like, uh, I can't remember exactly what it's called, workload identity, or um, basically integrations with the platform that mean that you don't have to do all this kind of faffing around, passing credentials around. You just say, this workload is running under this service account, and then somewhere else you say, this service account has permissions to do all this stuff. And possibly I could have built that into the way I did things, but I think it would be great if both the Plumi operator and Plumi in general and Flux had kind of a way of saying, by the way, you're doing this in GKE. So, you know, make sure that any kind of tenancy stuff you do um, gives things the right permissions. I mean, dealing with permissions is just a nightmare all the time. So anything that can help with setting up permissions and, and uh, it, it is really welcome. Um, in, in my demo, I tried to be really, really careful about the permissions that I was giving that service account that I created at the start. And in the end, I just gave it kind of blanket permissions for everything, but because I just couldn't, I didn't have the time to chase down all the individual little roles that I needed. Um, I think there's actually room for Flux to do some more there, but it's kind of a specialized thing. You know, it's it's particular to each platform and to Kubernetes. Yeah. Oh, that's really helpful. And not to not to plug here, but you know, perhaps there are things that we can explore in our product as well that might uh, help oh, us. Absolutely, that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think anything that sorts permissions out for you is a, is a winner product-wise. 
Um, well, excellent. Um, unless if there are any other questions, I will um, share. Sorry, I'm having trouble finding my, oh, sorry, the bright green button. The share, um, oh, sorry. This is one of those Zoom things where I have to un full screen it to get it back to share mode. Yep. I believe you have some links that we want to have here. So thanks everybody for joining. Like I said, if this is your first time joining the Weave Online User Group or our GitOps uh, community meetup groups, we have many. Um, we will send you an email with the calendar information uh, for future events. Uh, as I said, we uh, have the QR code that we'll share. I think I shared again at the final slide. Uh, if you want to join us or find out anything that's going on at QCon EU, whatever we can record, we will try to record. Um, here's our flex information as well as our Pulumi information. Um, Michael, I don't know if there's anything you wanted to share on the Pulumi side. I think it's pretty straightforward. We've got the website, GitHub, Slack, and docs for people to get started. Um, Michael, did you have anything specific to this Flux and Pulumi integration? I don't know if you shared any links if people want to see the work that you did. Uh, I've not. It, it is all in a Git repo. Um, I'm going to tidy it up a bit and then I'll, I'll give it to you, Tamo, and, and you can send it in a mail out. Does that sound okay? Yes, sounds great. And we'll include cool. that in the follow up. So thanks everybody for joining. Again, we've got the QR code if you'd like to grab that. Um, we hope to see if anybody's in Europe or planning to be at QCon EU. Uh, we will see you there. Michael, will you be at uh, QCon EU? <laughs> Was it sure? No. no oh, no. Sadly. Okay. Yes. yes. No, I know. I missed out on the last one as well. Yes. Valencia, that would have been awesome. But no. I'll be in the Americas. So thanks everybody for joining in. We will see you at the next one. Goodbye. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.